Hi, in this video I want to explain to you how to create transactions in bulk. The base record that I'll be using for this purpose will be the sales order record. However, the same principle will apply for other records that have header and line level detail. You want to start off by going to the record and figuring out what fields are required. If I look at my sales order record over here, while creating a new one, you will notice that the customer is required, the date is required, and the status is a required field. However, in your case, the memo, PO, or start and end date might be required. You might even have the sales order, uh, the sales rep, sorry, as required, as well as the opportunity. In my case, they are not required. If I go down to my line level detail over here, you can see that my item is required. However, even though there's no asterisk over here, rate or amount will usually be required if those fields are not set. The quantity is also a required field. So let's look at the template that I'll start off with. And you can copy, stop this video and then copy these fields because these are usually the required fields. Okay, so if I look at this, I'll start off with my external ID, which I will explain now. I have my customer date status, PO number, item number, quantity, and rate. Now, before I start populating this, you'll notice that my customers, I'm referring to them by the code or the database primary key. I'm also referring to my item by the primary key as well. Now, if, if this is not exposed within your system menu, like how the hell did I get to this? I will link a video here on how you can expose this. But the result of that is if I look at my customers, I can see the internal ID over here. And then I can see here is my um, internal ID also exposed over here for my items. So if I look at my template, you can see that is what I populated over there. So this is what you always want to start off with this basic template that I have over here. And then you add on to this. So should you have like the sales rep as required, you can add your sales rep over here and then enter the internal ID or the name of the person. There's a reason I prefer the internal ID is because it's not case sensitive. So I won't deal with any issues where, for example, the cap there's capital letters or lowercase letters and I'm not matching it directly as in as put into NetSuite. So I won't get those failures. Okay. So let's go back to the most important part over here, which is the external ID. The external ID here is very important because it indicates to NetSuite that it's a that it's a single record. So, for example, let's let me explain to you. If I have um, my external IDs are all self-generated, so I put those external IDs in there. If I put that external ID in there. This is indicating to NetSuite that this is one record. However, it's one record with different items on it. So for example, if I put one external ID in here with different uh, items in here, this will create one record with three lines on it. If I create one record here at the bottom, this will indicate to NetSuite that this is a second purchase, uh, sorry, sales order. Um, and there you can see the detail. So remember, if I look at this purchase order number, which is a field on my on my sales order record, you will notice that I'm generating and I'm ensuring that all of these are the same because there's only one header level PO number. This is also indicating that this is one. OK, so once again, one customer, three different lines, one customer one line and that's my quantity and my rate okay so that's what you start off with so now my template is complete csv and save okay now you want to head to netsuite you go to setup import export import csv record okay then my import type that will be transaction and below this i should see my different records so for for our example, we're using the sales order. So I'll select the sales order and the rest of the information will remain the same because I'm using comma separated uh, files. Okay, so now I'm going to go find my file. Next, 
and then you'll see the ability to add or update in my case it will be an add because i'm adding new sales orders if it's an update then you'll select update over there and then also important in your case should you have customizations scripts and workflows that's running on your transactions always remember to tick this then next okay now you will notice that NetSuite tried to go and map everything for me. Now let's have a look quickly at the, this uh, mapping that took place. If I look at the first one over there, I got rate. I can go ahead and remove that one because I can notice straight away that this rate is referring to the header level section, which is here. So if I go to sales order, there's a header level section over here. If we look at an actual sales order, that would be referring to this part over here. Okay, then I want to remove that because that's an incorrect mapping. My customer, that is a correct mapping. My external ID, that is correct. My sales order, I'm happy with that. My PO number, I'm happy with that. Date, item, that is correct. So here is my line level section. And that's referring to a sales order, this part here at the bottom. Okay, so my item is, is linked already. My rate, however, is not linked yet. So I'll take the rate over there and go and link it to that. And then my quantity, that's also not mapped. And that's just because we got the short quantity abbreviation over there. Okay, so now my mapping is complete. I'm happy with that. And that's the minimum fields that is required in order to import a sales order on my system. Remember, in your case, if there's more fields, you simply just ensure that those fields are also linked here. In your case, for example, let's say a tax code is always important. You'll have to then select your tax codes and stuff here at the line level and move that across. So you have full control over this. You can even override the description perhaps and put that in there as well. So let's move on to the next, uh, the next step. So I'll click on next. And now here, this is very important. When you, when you create a template for yourself, always save that template. So in my case, let's use my initials, right? TC and um, test sales order SO for sales order template. And then in the future, if I want to use this mapping again with the same template, I just go to my existing template. I'm not going to do this mapping exercise again. So I go ahead save and run so after i click the on after i click on save and run this banner will appear and i can click then on import job status once i click on that you can see that my latest uh my latest run um was actually unsuccessful so meaning because of my external ids nets we picked up there was two sales order records to be created and both of them failed so you'll click on the CS, uh, CSV response to figure out why it failed. So let's open that record, um, that CSV file. And we can notice something over here. It's indicating to me that I have the invalid reference key 57. And that is referring to my customer. Now I'll explain to you exactly why that failed. And the reason that failed is because 57 is actually not a valid customer number or name rather. And if I go back to my import, so now because we saved our import, this is cool. We go to, to setup, import, export, and I go to save CSV imports, right? And I'm going to go find my one that I just created. There's the one DCSO template. I can now open that and you can see this is pre-selected for me. I can select either my failed one or the my old template. So I'll select my old one, go next. I don't need to worry about that because I already populated all of this. But here's where the update takes place. Because I personally like using the internal IDs or primary keys of my records. Um, I feel that they are less complicated and I don't need to worry about case. So in that case, you can see if I go to custom over here, I need to click on this pencil icon and change my reference type over here from names to internal ID. So that's important for everywhere you are using the internal ID, always change it to internal ID. Should you be using the actual customer name, you leave it on names. Okay. So that's an update that I need to make. And remember, I've done exactly the same for the item as well. So I'm going to change my item to internal ID. This should fix it. 
Um, an example where I actually use the name is actually this record over here, status. Remember my status, I actually had fully typed out the word. And remember that needs to match exactly the way it is in NetSuite. Should there be a case of space, it will fail. Now you can actually also provide the default value and actually select it here. So NetSuite also gives you ability to do this. Okay, I'm just gonna cancel that. I don't wanna make any changes to that. And I'm happy. I'm going forward, save, and now I can go save and run. It's telling me that it will override the import. Yes, I want that to happen because I just made an update and going forward, I want it to reference by internal ID. Okay, now I click on okay. I click on my import status and let's see. You can see this one is actually slightly taking a bit longer, but now it should have already told me that it was, it should have failed. So let's see. That's the one I'm referring to. Let's refresh it. Ah, oh, perfect. You can see my two records fail, uh, saved successfully. How do I see this? I go to sales order. I click on, on my sales order. So it's on transactions, sales, sales orders and list. I can then see this list over here. And there you can see my two records that I was, that I just created. That's the two. And uh, remember it was PO ending one, two, six and two, two, seven. Now let's have a look at the two different records. You can see the first one, I had three different items. I set the rate and I set the quantity. And obviously next we figured out what the amount should be. So that is all sorted for me. And then my second record, I only had one, one item. And there's my one item with, my, with its rate and quantity. Quantity of two. Okay, so that's how you import transactions in bulk in NetSuite and also how you can actually specify multiple lines for those transactions. So all you need to do is just add to the template, copy the template, and then just add your various fields, fields to it. If you enjoyed this video, please give this a like and subscribe, um, and I will truly appreciate that. Thank you so much, cheers.